With patches coming every quarter, mostly on schedule, we've been receiving a steady flow of content this year from Star Citizen here in the PU. But with all the time and effort that's put into Star Citizen, it seems like there should be more coming out of it. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and in this video, we're going to talk a bit about how the recently released Squadron 42 teaser trailer might provide us some insight into where all this effort has been going. So about over a year ago, the CIG developers talked to us about how they're going to be shifting their focus away from the PU temporarily to try to focus on getting Squadron 42 out. What that means is that the vast majority of what they're doing behind the scenes isn't stuff that we're going to regularly see make its way into the PU as they want to release most of the stuff as a surprise for the full single player campaign. This understandably has had a detrimental effect on the appearance of the progress of the project. With only the PU or Persistent Universe to use as an indicator, it does look to be quite sketchy at times considering the bugs that have consistently popped up. However, the recent addition of a teaser released here on Christmas has given us a look into what they've been doing behind the scenes, and it is impressive. So in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through that trailer step by step and tell you what's going on in each scene. And then at the end, I'll break down what I think it might mean for the progress that they've made this year on Squadron 42 and the tech that will eventually make its way into the wider universe. So let's rewind for a second all the way back to the beginning. The first few seconds treat us to the Bengal Carrier, a flagship of the United Earth Empire and a ship that we know we'll encounter in the coil, something that we see featured here in a much more complete state. According to the roadmap, it should be done right about now. Then we get a look at the Idris Frigate, which is the hero ship of Squadron 42's campaign, approaching what seems to be the outside of the entire coil in the Odin system. The next shot though is pretty unclear to me. I checked the arc map to try to locate a broken moon, but I couldn't find one. This might still be the Odin system, but it also could be an entirely different system that we've yet to see in any of the trailers. Then we see what looks to be a broken mining colony, which really does match closely the images we've seen of the Van Duel, suggesting that this might be where they are. This large vessel though is in a completely different area and not even the same system most likely. This is the Shubin Interstellar Mining Facility. And we've already seen parts of it in other trailers, namely the one we got last year. We saw the bridge of it in the latter part of one of the trailers, and we also got a peek at a fight in that same trailer surrounding it, suggesting that these guys aren't going to be very friendly in the end. What's cool though is that from all these images, I'm starting to think this actually might be a movable platform like a capital ship. Then we get a look at what looks to be some sort of communication antenna satellite or station that we also get peeks at of the interior later in the trailer. From there we find out that the Vanduul have also gotten a bit more love from the last trailer we've seen them in. Their models are visually different as well as their weapons being improved visually. The ship designs have also all been updated to what we saw in the blade that was added about a year ago now. And it also looks like all of them from the blade the Glaive, the Scythe, and what I think is a Vandal gunship all have been updated to this new language. To show you guys the difference, here's the old Glaive, which has been around in Star Citizen for probably years, as well as the Blade, which has only been around for just over a year. You can see the difference in their language and how they've been iterating on it since its initial look. It's very different now from what it once was. It originally was much more mechanical and pieced together looking. Now it's a bit more organic and bespoke to, I think, the look of this alien race, which is apparently the enemy of humans. At least that's, again, what we can tell from their actions and the lore that surrounds the game pre-Squadron 42 release. What's really surprising as well is I think they may have changed the scale of these ships because the cockpits on these new ships look a lot smaller. We also got to look at the shipjacker ships with one apparently being the old model for the Cutlass Black. We also may have gotten a bit of a spoiler. This is definitely the interior of an Aegis ship, probably in Idris, and then here is the destroyed side of a Javelin suggesting things are not going to go terribly well for the fleet we saw in the initial trailer. 
Then we get a look at what I think are the OMCA's headquarters, as we have seen peaks of this in the earlier trailer when they were referenced. We don't know who they are, what kind of faction they're going to be, but certainly they're not friendly. Near the end, we start to see the interior of the Bengal, which is much more fleshed out here than we've ever seen in the past, with interstitched areas of what might still be the Bengal, but I can't be certain. They just could have different tones depending on what area you're in. Thrown in to kind of throw us off is what looks to be a colony, because it definitely looks like it's more of a station interior than a ship interior, which may actually be a manufacturing facility, judging by the Argo cargo being assembled. And then we jump back to what I think is the interior of that big antenna station, judging by the shape of the interior being radial, that's circular. That tells me that this is a place we're going to have to visit and perhaps reactivate or investigate as to why it's been abandoned. It definitely doesn't look like it's been occupied. There's something that's gone wrong here. It's a spooky location and I can't wait to see it in game. The final image then shows Shubin Interstellar's gigantic mining capital ship from below. Even though this teaser is very short and doesn't have much information in the way of the campaign's narrative itself, it does tell me quite a bit about how much effort has been going into the set design and tech behind Star Citizen, stuff that we haven't even seen yet. While things like the space stations are great, they are modular designs designed to be a platform for being easily reproduced across the universe. This is in contrast to Squadron 42's unique, bespoke locations that have to be handcrafted by artists as they go from scene to scene. Just for example, in a Cedo station, you can tell it's not modular because it's a radial or circular design, which is very difficult, if not impossible, to make modular because of the nature of radial floor plans. There's also a great deal of assets here that I've never actually even seen in game. Stuff like boxes, panels, windows, computers with nothing that is recognizable from the PU, at least very, very little that's recognizable from the PU, which tells me that there is a lot more to Squadron 42 than I first thought in terms of the locations that are going to be added into the universe once Squadron 42 is released next year. Well, hopefully next year. We know how they are on those schedules. While well, OCS has been a very public thing that they've developed and added into Star Citizen, Gas Cloud Tech is one of those things that we haven't seen a lot of at all in the PU, and has been a huge effort on the tech side for the developers over at CIG. Take note that in this particular trailer, we're seeing the overall look of stuff like the coil and how these clouds are forming together, whereas in earlier images and scenes, we've seen much more localized images that don't give us a big picture, indicating that the tech might be very close to a complete state. And while progress on ships in the PU seems to be going at a much more quick pace than it has in the past, it's clear to me, judging by just how many ships they've reworked and introduced into Squadron 42 without even showing us until now, that they have a lot more people working on those ships much more efficiently than they possibly do here in the PU. It should be noted though that the demands of ships released to the PU might be a bit higher than they are in Squadron 42, as players probably won't be flying Van Duel capital ships anytime soon. In fact, that's probably exactly why they've been so quick at getting these ships done. They don't really have to worry too much about things breaking, because they're going to be controlled by AI anyway, at least for most of them. Overall then, as a backer, of course I'd like to see more, and I think we will see more this year at something like Gamescom for a much more focused Squadron 42 trailer. We haven't gotten one this year, which is a little bit strange, considering the roadmap puts the release of beta at the end of 2020, which is now just a year away. But as I've concluded here and as you've seen here now in the trailer, they have made a lot of progress and effort towards getting Squadron 42 out, and it does again, give me more confidence in the project. But what do you guys think? Did I miss anything in this little teaser? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you want to win a free Argo Mole, make sure you also hit the subscribe button to find out in a later video how you can win one on this YouTube channel. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.